All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond, How to Get Out of Babylon. And wanted to touch on two guys, both on YouTube and both have, I believe, yeah, both have websites, blog sites, whatever. Our Way is the Highway is Noel Hadley's YouTube channel. It is also the name of his blog site. So I'm just kind of an introduction, shout out to these guys. Um, quite a bit of a breath of fresh air from, uh, you know, just from my perspective. Um, I, like I said, I kind of just pulled away from Flatter for quite a while. I hadn't really studied it. And that, that's fine, you know, I mean, it's not the end all situation. One of my subscribers did write in and said, well, you know, the earth is going through changes. In other words, things are getting pre pretty precarious. Does it make any difference? I don't know exactly how she worded it. What difference does it make? You know, w why be concerned about what the earth looks like? Uh, we'll, we'll go into that. Um, to me, it's, it's one of the most critical. And my statement I read the other night, I think, should explain that in full. Um, the fact that the if it were not for the idea of the sun, you know, the heliocentricity of our solar system, the idea that the Earth is moving around the sun, that that was what catapulted the world into darkness. In other words, if the Earth was believed by everyone on Earth to be fixed and immovable with a dome over it, with God sitting up in the throne, which is what the Bible says, looking down on man... Uh, the world would be a different place right now. You would not have any communism because, like I said, Charles Darwin's book, Origin of the Species, he sent a autograph and a letter to Karl Marx, and that, that book, Atheism, Atheistic Evolution, fermented in the brain of Karl Marx, might makes right, power comes out of the barrel of a gun, uh, how many hundreds of millions of dead people owe that death, owe their death to the teaching that the earth is moving in space and that there is no God over mankind. That is the foundation of atheistic evolution and the atheistic communism and Lenin and Stalin and etc 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 so watch a few of the videos uh just a uh, happenstance i mean every once in a while I, I i look it up and watch it uh i'll come back to that in a minute i want to just do this real quick our way is a highway just he, this guy has innumerable i i couldn't even tell you how many articles he's got on his blog site so grasshoppers of flat earth you know paul caught up to the third heaven what does the bible say there's a third heaven. There's the heavens, the air. There's the heavens where the stars and the sun and the moon are. There's God's heaven. So, if you don't want to believe that, that's fine. You know, if you're an atheist out there and you're listening to me, I, why would you torture yourself to listen to me? Sorry, you know, not my problem. So, anyway, not a lot here. Now I wanted to go to Philip Stalling. I can do that quickly, maybe not. I can't pause this, sucks, but I can't. So, I was there, it'll be a minute. Blah, 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 blah. history. That should do it. Um, might have been where I was. Oh, come on, I was just there. Okay. Philip Stallings, there he goes. Okay, so Philip Stallings, 307. They Both these guys have about 300 subscribers, so subscribe to him, follow him. He has something called the Biblical Flat Earth Series. I would recommend that. He debated Kent Hovind. I would not call it a debate as much as a discussion. It, so, it sounded like it was a over-the-phone, radio type of an interview discussion thing. Uh, it didn't sound like much of a debate. Debate to me is when you have a moderator, you have a five-minute opening statement, ten-minute opening statement, whatever, to present your case, two-minute, five-minute rebuttal, you know, 
uh, opening statement, rebuttal, question and answers, moderated, you know, fair, score it, you know, boom, who wins? So, anyway, Biblical Flat Earth Series. So, subscribe to this guy if you would. And, and I mean, I, I would just recommend it. I'm just saying they're giving some good, solid thinking to the whole situation. Uh, another young guy, I don't know much about him. He has a book called The Doctrine of Flat Earth. Uh, Nathan Roberts, he's taken a lot of flack from different things, but he's doing some good stuff. So those were the, th the ones that I was talking about. Um, and then, uh, let me see here. Well, let me let me just end that one there, because, you know, that that's pretty much, this, this guy here, Your Curveless Earth is another um, young guy. but uh, All right, guys. Check. You know, some good good videos. Um, he interviewed a friend of mine, uh, Rob, right there. Commercial Pilot Talks, Flat Earth. Uh, if anybody thinks they're intelligent, if anybody thinks that they can argue with somebody, I'd suggest give this guy a shot because... Number one, he can out talk anybody on Earth, and two, I mean, he can he can out out think him. Okay, yeah. You know, uh, he was a general qualification U.S. military, uh, West Point graduate, political science major, commercial pilot, military pilot, uh, you name it. He he can talk all the facts and figures and the smack and everything else. So, uh, brilliant guy. I had him. I did a. I can give the. I should do that. I should give the uh, code and everything for my uh, flat earth uh, radio mm, telephone thing. It's still up, and it's number uh, 33, Number, uh, and then I ran out of uh, memory on the thing, gigabytes, so one gigabyte after about a year. Anyway, Rob, come on, not young. Oh, stop it. Okay. Rob Taylor, yeah. Rob Taylor, uh, brilliant guy, absolutely brilliant guy. So if you want to hear something from somebody that's not a stupid flat earther, uh, this guy's not stupid, not stupid at all. He can talk about history, he can talk about economics, he can talk about, he's written papers, he's written uh, uh, Flat Earth from a Military Pilot's Viewpoint for Small Wars Journal, a military journal. So give that one a shot. But Curveless Earth is a good, a good young guy, so... All right, I'm going to end that one with all that good stuff. Uh, there might, there's a few other guys coming around, but, you know, there's some newer, and I can say newer, they're not really that new, but they're, I think, I guess what I'm saying is there's some people that are going to start making a mark in, on history and the world, whatever, maybe, maybe put it that way, kind of predicting that. Um, and some people are going to be going down in flames, I think. Kent Hovind, Ken Ham feel sorry for those guys. I really feel sorry for him. And that's one thing that Noel Hadley said. He said, I, he said, Kent Holbein spent years in prison and it took its toll on him. Did they microwave him? You know, did they threaten him? Did they pay him? Did they buy him off? Did they compromise him somehow? Did they, you know, they, they do all kinds of ugly things. And I think that's probably why he's uh, doing what he's doing. I think he's been massively compromised. So, and it's sad. But the fact of the matter is, to me, they're traitors, they're dishonest, they're liars, and where does that leave them? In the final analysis of things, where does that leave them? Not in a good position. So, all right. There you go. Jerry Diamond, my two cents worth. This is Jerry Diamond, if you're listening to this. You are the remnant.